I'm Erin from TechGadgetsCanada.com, and I did not have the greatest experience reviewing a robot vacuum recently. When I checked out the Dream D9, I had a lot of problems, and you can check out the full review right here on the channel by searching Dream D9. That got me wondering why I had such an awful time, and if it was me, my house, my Wi-Fi, or the vacuum, or maybe a combination of circumstances. So I decided to do a partial re-review. I took the robot vacuum over to another house, got it set up and tried running it there. I am actually really glad to say that some of the circumstances changed. For starters, the new house had zero transitions, so it is much better able to navigate through all the rooms without a problem. At my place, the Dream D9 was constantly getting hung up on all the transitions between floors and on rugs. The new place, there was less to get hung up on, though I did also find it was getting caught on a fairly flat rug, which was the same problem at my place. Creating a no-go zone did help. The other serious problem I had was the home mapping. During my initial testing, I was never able to get the robot to make a complete map of my house so that I could create rooms and do room by room or zone cleaning. After testing it out at the other house, I think the mapping was never able to complete at my house because it kept getting stuck and the robot would just never be able to finish that mapping run. It would get stuck, die, and I'd have to manually place it back on its home base station, which confused its robot brain. At the new house, I'm really glad to say there was a detailed map of the space created after just a couple of outings, and I was then able to label it, create rooms, and then launch room-specific cleaning. So here's what I've learned about the Dream D9. If you have no flooring transitions in your house and nothing the bot has to roll over, you are probably going to have a much better experience with the Dream D9 than I did. If you have multiple or thick flooring transitions, this is definitely not the robot vacuum for you. If you have a lot of rugs or carpets, this is also not the bot for you. If it can't get onto them, it can't clean them. And if you have to block them off because it's getting stuck on them, it's also not going to clean them. So it's not going to be as useful a vacuum robot to you. In short, I'm glad I was able to get some of the features I had trouble with working. But the bottom line for anyone who's considering this robot vacuum and mop combo is that you need to have the right house for it. One with no or extremely low threshold flooring transitions. I do still have some other unresolved complaints about this bot. Uh, I don't think it should be getting stuck as much as it did in my opinion. I have tested several other robot vacuums at my house and they did not get stuck nearly this much in exactly the same space. But hopefully some of you will be glad to know it seems the worst of the troubles was location and flooring specific. If you want to read the full review, like I said, or reference any of what I talked about, you can head over to techgadgetscanada.com where I've got that full write-up. You can also check out the full review right here on the channel. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Erin. Until the next time, you can find me on either Twitter or Instagram. I'm at ErinLYYC. You can also always catch me through Facebook at facebook.com slash techgadgetscanada.